Okay, welcome to our Tech Hire NCTC Alumni Association um, Virtual Lunch and Learn. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us. We're really excited um, about this series. This is actually our second one that we're presenting today. Um, and the NCTC Alumni Association really started this to engage our alumni. We want to engage our community, um, our students, and um, as long as faculty and staff. So we're really excited to bring you this. Um, we are hopeful we're going to continue this. We've got guests lined up all through this fall semester um, to bring you the most important information about the Alumni Association and about NCTC. Uh, so I want to introduce Michelle Harvey, who is going to tell you about our program today. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us during your lunch break. As Liz mentioned, my name is Michelle Harvey, and I'm the development coordinator here at the college. Before I introduce our pre uh, presenters today, I want to share more about the Alumni Association here at NCTC. For anyone that has ever attended NCTC, even if you did not graduate with a degree or certificate, you have the opportunity to join the Alumni Association and your first year is free. You have the opportunity to receive special invitations on, of, on events on campus once we are able to get back on campus. <laughs> and you have access to the NCTC library, discounted tickets to NCTC musical and theater productions, guidance from our career services, and you will receive an alumni t-shirt as well as other benefits as well. You can join by signing up on our website at nctc.edu slash alumni. We're looking forward to connecting with you all. Now I would like to introduce our pres uh, presenters for today. Joining us are some of our amazing Tech Hire staff, Becca Sanchez, our Tech Hire Grant Manager, and Lauren Williamson Jerome, our Education and Employment Coach. And also joining us is Susan Savane, Division Chair of Information Technology. And let's get started. So could y'all tell us more about this grant, about the Tech Hire Grant? So the Tech Hire Grant is a Department of Labor grant, and the purpose um, overall is to support individuals who are needing training and getting into jobs that are mid to high skilled jobs in IT, industrial technology, and engineering technology um, to really have more of a family sustaining wage. And um, so we have different training tracks that we'll discuss on the training part and the employment part of it. But that's kind of an overall broad idea of the grant. Okay, awesome. Uh, what programs fall underneath the grant? So we have IT, we have database, cybersecurity, gaming, uh, CITE, which is our general degree and networking. Um, and then we have engineering technology, which is our drafting program. And we have the industrial technology programs. So that's HVAC, um, industrial mechanics, machining, and welding. And we awesome. have an electrical tech occupational skills award under one of those as well. Okay, awesome. Um, I just noticed that there are so many IT jobs available. So I could just imagine like, can, uh, this is just a personal question. If I was to go get a degree in information technology, could I also do networking as well? Or would I have to get a different certification? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of both. So our, our CITE general degree gives you a lot of breadth. So you're learning a little bit about networking, a little cybersecurity, a lot of programming. Um, so you're getting different areas, a lot of web design in that one. If you do want to specialize in one of the areas like networking or cybersecurity or database, then that gives you more depth into one area. But we've seen that there has been some crossover. For example, we have students who earned a networking degree and are employed with a cybersecurity um, company or somebody who has the general CIT e degree and they're employed with um, a networking company. So there is some crossover. It just depends on how deep you wanna go into training in one particular area. Or if you want to stay with that broad general, I want to know a little bit about everything, which is really appealing to people who want to move up in IT companies so that they can understand what their different divisions are doing. Okay, awesome. Well, since NCTC have six campuses, where are all the programs available? And also, too, is there any online availability since we are in this new age of education currently? 
So our programs, when we're on campus, are hosted um, at different locations. So we have um, we have our Cisco labs where you can actually use the the networking equipment on our Corinth and Flower Mound campuses. Um, that's really key to you know being able to have that hands-on experience. So we feel like that's really important piece of learning networking. Uh, and then we have online. We have a lot of our database classes. Um, and then between Corinth and Flower Mound is where a lot of our um, IT classes are generally with a focus in cybersecurity and Flower Mound. And, but you can take some of the other classes in that degree in Corinth as well. And then our industrial technology programs are in Gainesville. Um, they have, we have the shops in Gainesville on that campus, so they're all hosted there. And then our engineering technology is almost all in Corinth. That's where the lab is there with the 3D printer, which is really cool. And, um, but you can take some online classes in that one as well. Right now for the fall semester, we are offering a lot of online options. Um, Susan, do you wanna kind of speak to that part of it? Um, sure. So of course, as everyone knows, um, COVID is, is creating some challenges within um, education. And um, we have a strong focus on, uh, on safety. And so, to be honest, the majority of our classes that we're offering in IT are actually online. So I believe we have 65 courses um, across the schedule and only five of them are actually meeting face-to-face -face, um, at any point. And even those are doing it in, in a hybrid format. So some days students are on campus and other days they're actually attending class from home um, online in a synchronous format. So basically the instructor is teaching and at that same time they're online and able to ask questions live. Okay, awesome. And I will follow up and say that our industrial tech, um, it's kind of difficult to do welding and HVAC and machining from home. Um, so those programs do have in-person options or in-person um, availability and We've been working with students in that area over the summer to complete their spring and summer courses. So we have um, had people on campus in those programs and it's been working out well. Okay, um, I know people are concerned about the classroom sizes when it comes to like actual face-to-face -face classes. Is there a cap on the classroom sizes in the fall? Could you share if there is one? Yes. Susan, do you want to go? <laughs> um, yeah, so each um, room has been analyzed. So for example, Becca mentioned the, um, the Cisco labs that we have in Frisco and Flower Mound. There's a considerable amount of equipment that's within that space. And so right now, both of those labs are capped at um, seven students and one faculty. Um, and again, because we're using the hybrid format, some students for those courses for the fall will actually They'll attend one day within the classroom, and then the other days when they're scheduled to meet, they'll be attending from home. So we can rotate the students in, they can work with the equipment, get their hands on it, um, get build that muscle memory of um, working with routers and switches. And then um, the uh, we have virtual virtualized environments in which they can complete the same types of labs from home and continue to learn and keep up with um, with the curriculum, so all the curriculum will be delivered, and it's just a um, it's just a whole new world. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, that's good to know because I know that's probably a concern for quite a few people. And thanks for sharing that. Okay, um, do you mind sharing how you qualify to join for the grant? Um, if you is it only eligible for NCTC students? Lauren, do you want to cover that one? Sure. So while the grant does cover the IT engineering tech and industrial tech programs at NCTC, we also have a non-credit option called the Google IT certificate, which is offered online through Coursera. 
And this option is great for individuals that are just getting into IT and maybe don't have any uh, previous experience in it. It's perfect for those students that want to get started and it can be completed in as little as five to eight weeks completely online um, for free through the Tech Hire grant. We also have multiple tracks that students can go through. So one of the tracks, which almost all of our grant participants um, go through that one is the one where they get the full education and then go into employment. So they might be pursuing an associate degree or a certificate. And then we have another track where people may have been in the field before and they just need some upskilling or one or two classes as refreshers. And then we have a final track for people who have all the training that they need, they've just had challenges finding jobs. And so we work with them on employment. So that we have multiple levels depending on where the individuals are in their life and their background and what their ultimate goals are with employment. Okay, I got another question. Um, say for instance, I completed the program and I received my associates um, and I wanna pursue a four year degree, get my bachelor's. Do you partner with any local universities in the area to continue, help continue the transition? So NCTC has, um, has partnerships with several universities in the area. And so our degrees all will move into BAASs at different universities around Texas. Um, as far as the grant partnering with universities, we don't necessarily do that through the grant, but we do advise students on the opportunities that they have to um, transition from NCTC to the university. Okay. All right. Um, could you tell us more about the benefits someone will receive from joining the Tech Hire grant? I can talk a little bit about that. So kind of an overview of some of the benefits that students receive when they join the Tech Hire grant. Um, the first one is the tuition assistance. Tech Hire will um, help a student pay their tuition. We will cover 50% of the first 45 hours of a student's degree. And after they reach um, 45 hours, we'll cover 100% of the final 15 hours. We do offer paid internship opportunities through our business partners. Um, when students join the grant, they get paired up with a coach so we can provide that one-on-one -on -one coaching. We also offer um, certification boot camps, uh, IT and engineering tech tutoring, and other needs-based financial resources. Okay, could you tell us more about the tutoring that you offer? Is it um, 101 or is it like group settings? Is it appointment-based? So prior to COVID, the tutoring was um, hosted in our tutoring lab, which we have on the current campus. We have several computers there with the, the um, software that students have uh, need for from their classes and the tutors work out of there. Right now they're working remotely. So they have the capability to screen share with the student um, through a program that allows students to reach out to them. And then they get an indication that a student needs support and then they're able to connect with the student. So for IT, it's continuous. Um, for engineering technology, um, we will resume that in the fall as needed. And um, we currently don't offer the industrial tech um, tutoring, um, but it is an option. If students have need for that, we can um, provide that as well. Okay, awesome. Um, also to what entails the coaching? Like what exactly does a coach, like is it like, basically an advisor, do they walk them through the whole journey of the program? A coach is pretty much their partner through the whole thing. Um, so coaches in, initially when they come into the grant identify what the student's ultimate goals are as far as education and employment. And then the coach partners with the student throughout that process. And it could be um, guidance for advising for registration. And it also entails um, employment coaching, which involves resume revision and mock interviews and how to search for a job. Um, but it's also really working with the student on an individual level to see what are the challenges that that student is facing currently or might face in the future. So how can we partner with them to 
mitigate anything that might come up in the semester and be proactive with that approach. Um, it's also, you know, just identifying, keeping them on track and accountable for what they're doing and, and, you know, checking in to see how it's going. What do they need to do to sometimes get from this week to next week or from this semester to next semester? And so it's really kind of wraparound services from beginning to end. They, um, it's a lot of referrals if there are financial aid or business office questions, if there are counseling needs. Um, so it really, the, the coach is, I would say most of our students, when we ask them for testimonials, they say that that was the number one benefit that they received. And our coaches have worked with students in these fields for a while. So they're knowledgeable about these areas specifically, you know, and, and I really think that that's a huge benefit to students because, you know, advising is is great and, and they're working with students in all majors and with our coaches, we get to really focus in and understand and, and meet the faculty and understand kind of even if there's not a prerequisite, what makes the most sense for the students to move through and, and taking their coursework and, and how that all fits together. And so I think that's a huge benefit. And Lauren, if you want to add anything um, to the coaching side, since you're a coach. Sure, I think it's a lot of what you said. It really is just partnering with that student and kind of working with their individual needs because every student is different and has different challenges, um, different needs, different successes. And so it's really great just to have a go-to person that you can kind of um, reach out to to be your starting point for any concern, question, good news, anything that happens that affects your journey. It's great to have that person there um, to share it with and to be your partner. Okay, awesome. Also too, is there a coach available on each campus where the programs are available or the coaches um, on one specific campus? Most of our coaches are at the IT Career Connection Center on the Corinth campus in Pinnell Square. We have one coach in Gainesville where our industrial technology programs are. And we do have the ability to meet students at the Flower Mound campus or really any campus, um, but it, it is mostly um, Flower Mound. Um, so we can meet them there uh, if they need to meet on that campus instead of the Corinth campus. And then our coach in Gainesville can meet students in Bowie and Graham if that's needed as well. Oh, and we can also meet in Denton. <laughs> I think what's great about the coaches is there's plenty of ways to contact us. Um, we have phone and email, but we also have texting numbers. So students can save our texting numbers. And if they have a quick question or a concern about anything, they can just shoot us a text. And so we can respond to them pretty quickly that way too. Great, okay. Well, Lauren, you mentioned paid, intern paid internship opportunities. Could you elaborate more on that? Sure. Um, so Tech Hire partners with several businesses in the industry around the North Texas area. And every semester we will work with those businesses to see if we can get internships for our students in the Tech Hire grant. Um, so we will work with the business partners and with the students to see where we can match those needs so that the employer gets a skilled intern. Um, and then they will also have the benefit of being able to give us feedback on that intern so we can identify any um, kind of industry trends, any um, kind of upcoming information, and really work with them to have that flow of information. Um, Becca, do you want to talk a little bit about the process of the businesses partnering with us? Sure, and, and Susan, jump in if you want to. Um, so NCTC has advisory boards for all of the career and technical programs. And the advisory boards have input into, you know, like Lauren said, what is coming up in the field, um, what new technology might be emerging that that the North Texas employers are looking for. Um, so I think that is, um, you know, wh whoever instituted this, it's brilliant because they're giving feedback to the college on what they want when students come out of school, what skills they're looking for from potential employees. And then we're able to use that information as an institution and say, okay, how can we fit this into our curriculum so that when the students come out, this, they have basically some tailored skills to the, the employers in this area. And we, as a grant, we had a previous Department of Labor grant. And so we have been working with the same employers for quite a while. And a lot of those employers are on the advisory board. 
and we like Lauren said, every semester we'll see what the needs are of those businesses, how many internship opportunities they have. We'll see how many students we have in the grant who need internship for that semester. And we'll start to um, match those, those people up with those um, opportunities. And a lot of them end up getting full-time positions with those companies um, or getting the experience that they need that they were lacking previously that now they can go and apply for full-time positions elsewhere because they had that experience in the internship. Um, so it's really been a huge benefit to the students to be able to get that experience, but it's also been a great way for NCTC to connect with these employers and really build those partnerships. I completely agree. I just, I just, I'm sorry, I wanted to make one comment and that is, um, first of all, that our advisory boards truly are a partner for us um, day in and day out. They are a huge contributor to our success as a program. And um, one of the benefits that they gain from the grant is that there's shared funding. So um, the, the business pays part of the funding for the student to be there and working with them. And then the grant picks up the rest of it. And so everybody's got some skin in the game, if you will. Um, the business partners get to kind of test drive our soon-to-be graduates, and that experience that the, the students gain is just essential. It's one of the reasons why Tech Hire was even put in place by the Department of Labor, because too many people were graduating from college with this skill set and yet no experience. And it's like the chicken and the egg. I've got a degree, but no experience, but I can't get experience because I, or I can't get a job because I don't have experience. And it's um, one plays into the other. And it's just been, it's been a wonderful experience for our students. And again, those business partners that make it all possible. That's great. Um, I have a question again about the internships, uh, which each program, um, in the, well, if you join the grant, do you have to do an internship? Now, several of our degrees require a co-op as the capstone, which does require an internship. Uh, but if people are doing a certificate, they don't have to do the internship, but we still give them an opportunity to do so. And then some of our programs like gaming has a portfolio as the capstone, so there's no internship required. But again, that doesn't mean that they can't do one. It just means it's not required for their credential. But we do try to give others, it, like if they're doing the certificate only and not pursuing the degree, we still want them to get the experience. So if we can find an internship for them, um, which does require more um, oversight from the business partner, um, because there's less training from the, the certificate than the degree. Um, but we do have very supportive business partners who are willing to, um, to work with our students at many different levels. Awesome. And I'm assuming that the, our industry partners range from startups, small shops to large corporations, correct? Absolutely. They are our partners. Some of them are brand new startups. Some of them are, you know, a couple of years old, but most of them are established local businesses. Many of them serve as the IT department for other local businesses or national businesses. And so there's a lot of, of help desk work, um, but we have networking partners, cybersecurity partners, um, a brand new database partner that we're really excited about. And, um, and you know, we, we work with some welding companies, some machining companies. So we, we, have, we have partners in most of our areas and we have an excellent career services center at NCTC. So for individuals who need a, an internship and we may not have a partner or our current partners aren't hiring at the time, then our career services and our tech hire coaches have worked with the student to go outside of our partner circle and find opportunities, whether it's internship or part-time employment or full-time employment to get those, um, those co-op hours done and get into full-time employment. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> um, Lauren, you mentioned coding camps, and I've noticed that this has been increasingly popular. Do um, what, co well, I said coding, what boot camps do uh, tech hire 
offers? And is it just strictly if you're a part of the tech hire grant or is it open to the public? So with these specific boot camps, it is only available to our tech hire participants. And the kind of boot camps they are is that they are the um, CompTIA certifications. So the industry standard um, third party certifications and boot camps that we've done so far, we've done Network Plus, A Plus, Security Plus and CCNA. Um, we're hoping to add a couple more soon, but those are the four that we've done a couple of times and we've had really good success with them. That's good to know. I'm myself. I wanted to try coding, but I don't know if I can. <laughs> but okay. Um, I do want to add something to that um, because to me the numbers are extraordinary. When when you when you self teach for uh, a certification, the numbers um, range around ten to twelve percent passage rate. If you hire a private tutor, it's about twenty to twenty two, twenty five percent. Um, with these in-person boot camps that we've done, our, um, with one exception, most of our camps are ranging between 75 and 100% passage rate. So it's a huge difference in just that connecting together for several days and all working on it at the same time and, and taking the test together. It's just like this, we're all this together kind of mentality. Uh, so Definitely. we've really had great success with that and great networking opportunities with that as well. Have you had any challenges with camps this year or are they delayed or did you have any during, like virtually? So we didn't have any scheduled luckily for the time that we've been at home. And we talked about it and decided that because of the huge difference in, in success rates for doing something virtually or on your own versus doing it together in the camp, we do want to hold off until we're back on campus and have the ability to do it in a room together uh, because everything points to that's really the, a huge benefit of why people are so successful in that. Okay, I wanted to touch back on financial, well, need based financial resources. Lauren, you mentioned tuition assistance. What other resources are available to participants? So some of the other support services can include things um, like childcare reimbursement, grocery cards, and gas cards. So for students that have that financial barrier, we can really work with them um, to remove that barrier so that they don't have to spend the energy and the time worrying about childcare when they can be focusing on their classes or if they're having um, you know, a challenge getting to their internship so they can't complete their hours, we can provide them those gas cards so that we can um, support them as they reach their goals. That's really helpful. Um, I really love the treating the person like all together and making sure that they get through the program. Cause I know typically like if you just enroll, sometimes you just fall between the cra uh, cracks. So I really like that there's so much help that's available and I really like that idea. <laughs> Okay, um, for those that are interested, what are the commitments to join this program? So we ask students to work with their coaches on um, our, a participant commitment form. They, they sign together, but it's not, you know, there, there are a lot of grants that have, have checklists of you're required to do X number of workshops and X number of meetings and, and we, we value that. There's certainly something to that as well. Um, but we take that individualized approach with students and the coach and the student work that out together. So if it's somebody who has maybe owned their own company and they may not need resume work help or mock interview help or whatever, um, but somebody who's just out of high school, they may need all of those things. Um, so the coach and the student work together, and then they look at a, a full list of different types of workshops and needs that the student might have, and they decide together how many workshops the student needs to complete and what by what time, and then they decide how often the student needs to meet with the coach. For some people who are just getting started, maybe they're a first generation college student or a first time in college, um, or maybe they're returning after a long break, and so they want to meet more often so they can decide with the coaches they're going to meet, meet weekly or bi-weekly or 
or bi-monthly starting up bi-weekly. Um, some meet a couple of times a semester, maybe they're in their, um, their transfer returning student and they're like, I have this college thing down. I just need some accountability every now and then. Um, so it might be less frequently, but it's really individualized commitments that they make. And um, we ask things, of course, like um, if we're paying their tuition for the classes, that they complete their classes and stay in contact with their coach if something comes up and they need to withdraw or drop their courses. And then if they're attending boot camp, we ask that if they sign up, they um, complete the boot camp. And, you know, if we don't require them, obviously, to pass the certification, but we, we do require them to attend all the days of the boot camp and take the exam. Um, so we, we have commitments like that. We do get some questions though that we want to um, that we want to clear the air about. So sometimes we hear people say, well, I don't want to join because it's a grant and I don't want to have to pay it back. There's no money that has to be paid back to Tech Hire if these services are offered through the Department of Labor and they, um, they're a grant, which means this is money is to support you right now and you don't have to pay it back. We also hear concerns about, well, do I have a commitment to a certain employer or to NCTC for a certain amount of time after? Because people think of grants and they're like, oh, well, you know, my friend got a grant and he had to work for the company for three years afterwards. There's no time commitment like that that students have to serve. Um, so we really, if anybody has any concerns like that, or, you know, a variety of concerns that they may have, we would just encourage you to reach out to, to us and, and let's talk about what those questions are and see, um, you know, a lot of people will self-select out and think, oh, it's a grant. My parents make too much money. I'm not going to qualify or I make too much money. So I'm not going to qualify. And we would just ask that, that people just talk to us and let us know. One of the things is um, we work with people who have barriers to education or employment and people say, well, I don't have a barrier. If you're 17 to 29 and you don't have experience or education, that's a barrier. And people don't necessarily see that as a barrier, um, but it can be. So we definitely would encourage people to schedule a meeting with a coach and talk through your specific situation. Okay, um, what happens after the grant ends? So since we are a grant, we do have an end date. Uh, Tech Hire will run through the end of June of 2021. And once Tech Hire is no longer available, all that means is that our uh, benefits, our services will no longer be available. It doesn't affect the students' um, classes, their degree plan, anything like that. That will all be um, unchanged. What we can do is when the grant is coming to an end, we can work with our students and participants to kind of help fill those gaps by looking at um, other grants, other services that NCTC or the community offers, just so we can help them find ways that those services can continue to meet their needs. Okay. Um, well, Becca, you briefly mentioned the age range for this grant. Um, how do you find new participants for this grant? So Lauren is our amazing recruiter slash marketer for the grant, and she does an excellent job with reaching out to different populations like high school graduates, dual credit students, and um, people who are in different organizations and the communities that we serve. Um, so she really reaches out in broad ways in that way. And then we have some kind of targeted um, recruiting that we do as well. We have an upcoming event called Women in IT, and we have a lunch and learn next week for that. And I will let Susan talk more about that. She is leading um, that project and that program, and we're happy to work with her on that. Um, but I will let you give more details. So we're very excited about the lunch and learn that we have scheduled for next week. Um, earlier this summer, we were given the opportunity to have access to some other grant funds that allowed us to do some training on um, specifically marketing our IT programs to women. Um, like other occupations, there are certain areas where oftentimes um, a group is underrepresented, and that is true for us in IT. So um, we, uh, we have six graduates from our programs, and they are going to be on a panel discussing their experiences within NCTC, 
the support services they have experienced and used, as well as um, the courses that, um, that they took. And then in addition to that, they are, um, they're going to talk about what their success has been like, um, what's their experience been like since leaving NCTC, and how, um, how prepared were they, and um, just an overall view of what it's like to be a woman in IT. So we're super excited, um, and there is a link in, um, in the comments for um, those of you who are attending on Facebook. If you're interested, we would love for you to, um, to take part. And if maybe it's not the right match for you as an individual, if you've got family or friends, people you know in the community, at your church, who this might be a new opportunity for them, please, please share it because um, the more the merrier. It is um, one week from today, from noon until 1.30. And um, again, I invite you all to attend. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I really hope that we have um, that this encouraged more participation because, mm -hmm. especially if you're a woman and you're interested in IT, you can hear firsthand experience from our grads. Um, Becca or Lauren, could you tell us who can join the grant? Um, how do they go about the process, and how long is the application process for the Tech Hire grant? So we have two age groups of students uh, when it comes to the grant. Like Becca mentioned, the first age group is uh, individuals ages 17 through 29. And then the second group is ages 30 and above. Um, the Department of Labor has stipulated that 75% of our grant participants are in that first uh, age range, that 17 through 29. And 25% are in the second age range, the 30 and above. Um, to keep that ratio, we are focusing on the 17 through 29 year olds right now. Um, so if you are 17 through 29 years old, a US citizen or a permanent resident, um, and have one of those barriers, again, not having any previous education or experience in the field that you were going into counts as a barrier, um, would definitely encourage them to apply. For the 30 and over age range, we would definitely encourage them to check back with us. We hope to be able to open back up to that age range soon. Um, so when a participant wants to apply, all they would need to do is just send us an email, fill out the contact form on our website or give us a call and we'll schedule um, a one-on-one -on -one info session with them where we go over just all of the ins and outs of the grant, kind of talk about um, you know, their specifics and um, their barriers and go over the rest of the application process. Okay. Um, how long is the typical application process? Is it, do you have to apply a semester ahead of time or just drop in? We have um, ongoing applications and entry, so it, we don't have any deadlines. That's really on the student. We do have deadlines as far as the tuition assistance. So if they wanted assistance for the fall semester, they would have to be fully, um, completed with the process of the application and into the grant by the date of record for the semester that they want tuition assistance for. Um, otherwise, they could join the day after that and get all of the other benefits, just not the tuition. And then we would pick up tuition assistance in the next semester, even if, that, if that's the second eight weeks of the semester. Um, but as far as how long it takes to go through the process, that, that really is, um, up to the person who is applying. There are documents that they do have to gather to um, provide to us for the application process. And that's typically what takes some time. Um, but we have had people come in for an info session and schedule their interview for the following day. And, you know, we um, as a group meet about every applicant and then um, provide a decision back. And when people hear that, that there's a vote on, on who enters the grant, sometimes that makes people a little nervous. Um, and, and I just want to say that all we're looking for is do the goals of the person applying match the goals of the grant. And I'll give an example. So the purpose of the Department of Labor is to get people employed into these fields, right? I mean, that, that's what they want. They want people in employment. They are Department of Labor. Um, but we have some people who take welding classes because they wanted to start it as a hobby. 
or they take machining classes because they want to make jewelry. Um, you know, things like that. So while we certainly encourage that and, and that's a, a great way to learn a new skill, um, it doesn't match the goal of the Department of Labor. So that's really what we're looking for. We're not looking for um, did they answer the questions appropriately or, you know, did they do the research right or how did they score on the assessment that we provide? Um, we're not looking at that. We're looking holistically at, you know, what what do they want to get out of this? And is it something that we have the means to provide for them? And are we a good match? Um, so we have a very like extremely high acceptance rate um, and, and the reasons that people don't make it is typically because they're not really looking for full-time employment in the field. Um, so another thing that makes people nervous um, sometimes is the assessment. When we say that we do an assessment, we're not looking for a certain cutoff score. Again, it's a holistic approach. Um, so we, um, we have about a three hour process for the interview and a large portion of that, almost half of that is that assessment. And then we ask the students to do some research um, for the next maybe half hour. And we tell them, you know, look at career cruising, look at a, a day in the life of a cybersecurity analyst and see, can you see yourself in that role? And then we ask them to look at um, some job postings that are currently out there for, let's say a cybersecurity analyst. And, you know, look at the educational requirements, look at the experience requirements, is what you had in mind and falling in line with that. If, if you want an associate degree and all the jobs that you're looking at require a bachelor's, is that something that you're willing to pursue or do we need to explore other options? So we really want them to do some research on the front end to make sure that if they're not already in that field, this is something that they do wanna pursue. And then the final piece of the interview is the one-on-one -on -one coaching piece. And we're really looking for five things. We're looking for what's your educational goal? What is your employment goal? What are your past challenges? What are your past successes? And what are your barriers? Um, so there's a coaching conversation about that and just talking and, and figuring those things out. And that's where we really see if their goals match the goals of the grant. So yeah. just a note about the assessment. One of the um, kind of frequently asked questions I get is students will say, you know, what do I need to study for the assessment? I don't have any, um, you know, background in cybersecurity or networking. What do I study? And it's not that kind of assessment. It's not pass or fail. What it really goes over is um, kind of a student's skills, abilities, values, um, interests, and it puts it together all at the end for a student to see which industry um, they might lean towards. And so it's not, you know, a pass fail how much you know about it quiz at all and really it's valuable information so it'll show do your current skills match the field that you want to go into or is there a gap somewhere that we need to fill i mean as an as an educational institution that's valuable information to see where their educational gaps are so it really is a tool that can benefit the student and they can better understand themselves because it gives them like their interest level and like Lauren said, their values, which I don't think I've ever had a values test before in my life until I took this one. So it's interesting to kind of learn those things about yourself and see where you um, where you fall. And then, and then it gives us a level like bronze, silver and gold to see like, do your interests match your skills, which match your values and, and, you know, again, no cutoff scores that we're looking for, um, just information on the whole included with everything else to see, you know, who the applicant is, you know, overall as a person. I thought it was pretty fun when I took it. So too. that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> I actually want to take it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, thank you ladies for is sharing your expertise and sharing more about the tech hire grant because it's it's a gem. It's seriously a gem. It's very holistic and it walks everyone through the entire process, which not a lot of programs do that. So I really appreciate you sharing your insight on this. And Susan, do you mind um, sharing more about the Women in IT uh, Lunch and Learn for next week, just in case some people have dropped in after you share information about it? 
Sure, the Lunch and Learn is scheduled again for next um, Thursday, a week from today, from noon until 1.30, and it will feature a panel of graduates from our programs in um, networking, database, cybersecurity, computer information, and I don't think anything speaks louder for success than having graduates talk about their experiences, um, the challenges that they overcame to, um, to get to the place they are today, and um, sharing how their careers have developed due to the training that, um, that, that they got from NCTC. So we're very excited. Again, there is a link um, in the comments on Facebook. If you're interested or want to share that with um, a friend or a relative, I encourage you to do that. And um, if you'd like to come, please uh, register. And we would love to spend some time with you next week. Awesome. Well, Liz, do we have any questions that came up? Uh, no, I think we answered all the questions. We had a couple that um, that we already addressed and uh, I think hopefully we'll be having some people reaching out to you guys. <laughs> Great. Well, Lauren, Becca, do you have anything else to share about um, Tech Hire before we wrap up? Um, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to share with the alumni group. Um, it's it's been a true um, pleasure to be able to serve the students in this way. We had a previous Department of Labor grant um, that kind of overlapped with this one, and with that one, um, we were able to, as an institution, develop more infrastructure side and more of the programs, but we really have enjoyed being able to help the students at the level that we are now. And we would encourage you if you're questioning, you know, is this for me? Um, can I do this? Do I have time to do this? What will it look like for me? Um, just please reach out to a coach and, and have the conversation. There, there's no there's no commitment tied to it if you're you know reaching out and doing the info session. So we would just encourage you to um, to do that and to like Susan said, please share with friends or family or people you know who may be, um, you know, said, hey, I'm interested in well-being and this is a great opportunity to do it. You know, 50% tuition is um, is a great deal. <laughs> so, and we also offer, I, I don't know if it was mentioned before, but we also offer some assistance with the course materials as well. So the books and the welding materials and um, things like that. So we do that. If I can make just one comment, I was going to say that um, these programs are also available for financial aid. So scholarships, um, the FAFSA, um, those types of funds are out there and available. Um, and, and that's something to keep in mind, right? Tech Hire is an incredible program and it's going to end in June of 2021. But that doesn't mean that there won't be any other source of funds uh, to help students. We have an amazing grants department that's constantly working on finding new funding to um, enhance our programs and to provide services and, and support for our students for their success. So if that's um, a pivot point for you saying, oh, it's only a year, um, please, please don't, don't hesitate. This is an amazing program and um, now's a great time to jump. Great. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in today. Um, as Liz mentioned, we have comments, uh, links in the comments for the up and coming Women in IT Lunch and Learn next Thursday from 12 to 1.30. And again, take advantage of that. You'll help hear firsthand experience from NCTC graduates um, about their experience through the program and also what they're doing now. So again, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this Facebook Live Lunch and Learn with the Alumni Association and with Tech Hire. Like Michelle said, those links are in the comments and you can also find the email, the phone number and the website for Tech Hire to get all of your questions answered. Thank you so much.